Here's how to render bitmap images on the screen of a WaveShare or other ePaper display. The technique I demonstrate here doesn't use an SD card to store the images. The image data is contained entirely in the memory of the microcontroller. Later in the video I'll show you how to refine bitmaps so they look like this, instead of this. In this tutorial I'm using an ESP32, but it should work on the Arduino Uno, ESP8266 or other microcontroller. Bear in mind this technique does require significant memory. At a rough estimate I think you would get three full screen images like this if you were using the same 480 by 280 pixel display. Of course smaller bitmaps will take up far less memory. So the first thing to do is to prepare our images. I'm using the free GIMP photo editing package. So I strongly recommend you resize the image to fit the screen. The particular WaveShare screen that I'm using is 480 by 280 pixels, so I have resized this image to be 480 pixels wide and 280 pixels high. Next we need to export it in a format that we can use with the microcontroller. So to do this you need to go to File and then Export As. So in the Name text field you need to change the file extension to XBM. So click on Export. This window will appear, but you don't need to change any of the settings. You can just click on to export. So this is our image saved in XBM format, and you need to open it in a text editor. So you find inside the file, it's actually just a text file. And this is in a C format that we can use with the Arduino IDE, just with a bit of minor tweaking. So first let's go into the Arduino IDE and set up our project. So once the Arduino IDE opens, you need to go to Tools and then Manage Libraries. And in the Library Manager, you need to search for GXEPD2. So this is the one. So if this one isn't installed, then you need to install it. You almost certainly will also need the Adafruit GFX library. So check that the Adafruit GFX library is also installed. If you've done any graphics work at all, then it almost certainly will be there already. So now I recommend you go to File, Examples, and we'll find the GXEPD examples. Okay, here they are. So we want the GXEPD2 examples. And I recommend you open the Hello World example. That's a good starting point for doing screen work. So hopefully you've already got your screen up and working. If not, then I do have some other tutorials that show you how to get it working. But basically you need to go to display section new style H. So in here you need to find your particular screen and then uncomment the particular line. So the one I'm using is the 280 by 480 and that's really easy because there's only one of them there. So it is this one. So now you need to add the image data into this sketch. So I recommend you go to sketch and add file. Then you can add a .h file. So I've added images.h and make sure it is in the same folder as the .ino file and then it should automatically pick it up. So going back to our .xbm file exported from GIMP, you basically need to copy all of this variable. Where's the end? It's really long. Okay, so be sure to get the closing angle bracket and the semicolon. So we need to copy all of that and then we'll paste it into here. This is the images.h file. It's much better to put the image data in this to a separate file because then you don't clutter up the main sketch. So I normally rename the variable, so I've called mine. This is the Mona Lisa, so I've called it Mona Lisa data. GIMP doesn't put on progmem, but this has to be in all uppercase, and this specifies where in memory the image data is stored. So this is very important, so be sure to put this in. So you can put several images in here, but be sure to close the curly bracket and use a semicolon. So as you can see, you've got lots of data in there. So how do we render this bitmap onto the screen? So I've modified the Hello World example and commented out all of the code that displays the text on the screen. To render the image data, we call display.drawxbitmap. And it has a number of arguments. The first two are the X and Y coordinates of where the image data is plotted. 
Next is the image data that comes from the images.h file. Then it's the width and the height of the image. So the Mona Lisa is 128 by 128. And finally, there is a color. So it's worth bearing in mind that the monochrome displays are only black and white. There aren't any gray scales. More on that later though. So the code as it stands, this is the one that plots the Mona Lisa data and it also plots a better version of the Mona Lisa. So how did I do that one? So in GIMP you need the original color photo that you want to display on the screen. Then you go to image, mode and indexed. So for color map you need to select use black and white one bit palette. And you can play around with the dithering to see what looks better. I've left it on this one, Floyd Steinberg normal. So then we'll click on convert. So although this looks a bit strange on screen, it does actually render much better once you put it on the actual e-paper display. So here's the Mona Lisa that I put through the dithering process. And you'll see on this screen itself, it does look much better than the original black and white image. So the original black and white image is rendered if you just directly export a color image. So the Adafruit GFX library does have other functions for rendering bitmaps on the screen. However, I just couldn't get them to work with the ePaper. So I couldn't get draw bitmap and there's also, I think, a write bitmap. I think write bitmap is in the GXCPD2 library itself. So you could experiment with draw bitmap or draw grayscale bitmap, but I found that the ones exporting from GIMP seem to work best with e-paper displays. Incidentally, I have another video if you're using color OLED displays like this really nice WaveShare 128 by 128 pixel OLED. I use a very similar technique to display color bitmaps on them. So I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching.